Non catcher here. Another random monologue. Um, making good evil and making evil good. That is something this generation and the generations before mine did a lot of that is increasing. Bear to warning. Those that do such are not only confusing themselves, but are confusing other people and harming themselves and other people. Hmm. Seriously, think about this. Before you say something is good and of God, or before you say something isn't good or isn't of God, make sure you're checking yourself against what God is saying and not just going by what someone else has said in the past. Whether they are someone teaching from a pulpit somewhere or whether they are some famous old writer. Make sure it agrees with the Holy Spirit. For instance, celibacy. Hmm. What does the scripture say about it? There are a lot of different parts of what would be considered the church that all but force celibacy. Look at the scripture. It gives a warning on those causing others to abstain from marriage. Yes, to each their own gift as unto the Lord. But think here. No, not everyone is meant to marry, and it is something that should be entered into lightly. Very carefully. Not lightly. I'm talking too fast again. Anyway. Yes. Think very, very carefully. And study and do your own research. Test the spirits and pray for discernment about this. Because marriage is a huge issue. No matter what part of the board you're on. Or what page. Or what part of the page. So, be careful with that. Two. Physical intimacy. What does the scripture say about it? Three. What a relationship is supposed to look like. Four. How we are to treat ourselves and others. What does the scripture say about that? What about what we do with our things? What does the scripture say about that? I'm definitely pondering on all this. If we can't do it unto the Lord, we shouldn't be doing it at all. If we cannot do it in His Spirit 
of meekness, love, holiness, truth, and purity? Should we be doing it? Should we be taking part in it? Should we be refraining from it? If we can do it unto him, and he gives us a go, why should we refrain from it? Because that, that, there are two huge sides to this. Two huge ditches, as some of my Anabaptist friends make a, a metaphor. There are two ditches. One, the pharisaical way and mindset. The other ditch, lasciviousness, allowance, and fleshly license. Hmm. The Lord says, let your moderation be known unto all men. Those are probably Paul's words, too. But, you know. The Lord put it first in his own words. Anyway, so what are we doing here? Hmm. Look at your life. Think about all the things you do in your day-to-day -day life. What about Lying. What does the scripture say about lying in any shape, form, or fashion? Let's think about what lying is. Hmm. Saying anything that is not truth, not the complete truth, or anything that is a deception, intentional. I'm sure there are more things that could fall into that, but that's the basics there. Are you doing anything that's like that? If I'm doing anything that's like that, I'm going to run from it and stop it. And ask the Lord to help me to never do it again. Because I don't want to hurt him. Or anyone else for that matter. Let's see what else. Hmm... Adultery and fornication. Hmm. Yeah, most people know that's supposed to be a no-no. A lot worse than a no-no. Most people don't understand why. Let's think about that. Alright. There's more, and there are more, things that are considered adultery and fornication than what you do with your body. Even though what you do with your body is a huge thing. Think about what the Bible considers adultery. Think about what the Bible considers fornication. It is God-breathed after all. What does God Consider adultery and fornication. Anything that is breaking a covenant with God or outside of a covenant with God that is not pure, clean, holy, righteous, and set apart unto him. Hmm. A lot of things fall into that, don't they? Yeah, they do. And I've had to cut a lot of things out of my life when I realized, whoa, ha, 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 it doesn't just include that. It includes this and 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 this. Huh, but that doesn't, and that doesn't, and that doesn't, and that doesn't, and that doesn't. Hmm. So, I just kept deep, digging deeper and letting God teach me. What about 
taking the Lord's name in vain. Pretty much everybody knows about that. It has a lot more to do with saying his name. It also has to do with living his name. You know, think about what taking a name means. When people get married or when people are adopted, they take on that person's name. To have a person's name is more than just saying a name for whatever reason. It is being a name bearer. Think about that, all of those out there that are fellow believers. Think about it carefully. Is your life taking the Lord's name in vain or giving glory to his name? That was a big ouch for me. That was more than just toe-stepping. I felt like my whole foot was crushed with that. But it wasn't God doing it. I was the one who messed up and believed what other people were saying instead of believing what God was saying. So let's keep digging deeper. What would fall into unclean desire? You know, the kind of lust that's unpure. There are two types of lusts in scripture I've found curiously and oddly. One is unclean desire. One is clean desire. Lust is basically passionate desire. One clean, one unclean. Hmm. So, you can have unclean desire about nearly anything. Yeah, it gets summarized into the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. And anything in between. Let's include the pride of life in there. Yeah. Pride causes lust too. Anyway. So... Nearly anything could fall into that. But the thing is, anything that's pure is not a part of that. All right. There's just, there's so much. There's so many misconceptions. And there's so many things that deceive and confuse. The only way we're going to know is if we we study the scriptures for ourselves and dig in for ourselves and stop believing what other people tell us. God has got it all there. We don't need anyone but God teaching us. Yes, we as believers need to fellowship with each other, share what God is teaching us so that we can all learn together. But we're only student teachers. He's the real teacher. You know, we're, we're learning. Even those that have been pastors for 30, 40 years, they are still student teachers. They are still learning. They are not perfected yet. They are still being perfected. You know, I, I hear people, you know, quote things from Augustine, from Origen, from Moody, from Sturgeon, from Francis Chan, from this person, that person, here, yon, all over the place. Samuel Nisley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Samuel Nisley. Um, Tim Thomas, Brandon Tuck, yeah, anyway, it could be anybody, it could be anyone, but they are only student 
Yeah, student people. We're all students. People. Uh, <laughs> they are only student teachers. He is the real teacher. They are only under shepherds. He's the real shepherd. We need to keep our eyes on him. They can only teach us, and we can only teach each other, what he has taught us. So, you know, we need to be studying the scriptures for ourselves. You know, th theologians. Anyone can be a theologian. Uh, all it takes is the scriptures in the original, unhampered. If you know how to do it, you can use... A King James Bible or a New Living Translation Bible, a Strong's Concordance, a good dictionary, even though the Strong's does already have the Hebrew, Greek, and Chaldean, but sometimes you still need a dictionary. And you can know everything that a theologian knows. A theologian is basically just a student of the Bible that is thoroughly equipped and studying deeply. So you can do just as much, if not more, than Martin Luther did. Or any of the others that are long past. Any of us can get off track and get things misconstrued if we are not staying in the word. And I'm not just saying in the physical scriptures. I'm saying abiding in the word, the living word of God, who is Christ, who is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christos. You know, who is God, who was made flesh, who died for our sins. Who is the resurrection and the life who resurrected and is alive and ascended and is at the right hand of the Father. You know, we need to abide in him and everything that he taught from front to back and everything that he teaches us in life. It's no wonder people are calling good evil and evil good because they either ignore what good and evil really are or they haven't been taught and don't understand because they haven't been taught. It's, mo it's like more than one God-fearing person said. How can they be taught if they don't have a teacher. Well, they have a teacher. They have God. We all do. We just have to stop ignoring him. But yeah, I could I could go on and on and on down the whole list of the different things that the Bible says have a right or a wrong to. There are plenty of things that it has, it's all based on your intention. There are plenty of things that God gives lots and lots of wiggle room for. Like eating cheesecake. Or drinking soda and having a pizza. Or going mountain climbing. I don't know what he would say about bungee jumping. Maybe there would be a place for that. That's between you guys and God. Um, but yeah, there are plenty of things. Clothes, cars, houses, washing dishes. That There are plenty of things. Using musical instruments, not using musical instruments. Wearing a veil. 
Wearing a yarmulke? Not wearing a veil. Not wearing a yarmulke. Wearing a hat? Not wearing a hat. God gives plenty of wiggle room on those things. <sighs> yes, could go on and on and on and on and on and on about all the things that could be considered right and wrong. But you guys need to find out for yourselves. So this is my recommendation. And I'm sure most of you know it by now. If you know anything of me. But for those that don't. Pray for discernment. Test the spirits. Do your own research. And I'm talking about period. The scripture has a specific purpose. But everything that the Lord teaches us in studying of the scripture, he can also teach us and will teach us in studying everything in life. We're supposed to do everything as unto the Lord. And we're supposed to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, might, and strength. Hmm... That's so. And if we're doing that, we're going to learn a lot. But we can't depend on other people. We will be accountable and judged and measured for what we do. Not what this person or that 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 person or, that person or, that person or any of those other people are doing. It's between us and God. Are we comprehending this? It is between us and God. So stop poking your finger in the other person's eye and clean out your own so that you can both help each other. Yay! Yeah, let's let that sink in a bit. It says, judge not, least ye be judged for a reason. It says, we will be measured, we will be measured with the measure we meet for a reason. God is the judge. Not you, not me, not anybody else. So we need to stop being people pleasers and start being God pleasers if we really want what God has to offer. And nothing's going to be on our terms or on other people's terms. It's on God's terms. He's the only one that can write things out and put things to the letter and have a law that is going to do anything but destroy. We're already seeing that with the laws that man is inventing. The things that were based on and are based on God's law, which is more than moral. The things that aren't based on that are causing more harm than help. And they're causing more destruction than protection. But as we consider everything, I mean, really look at our lives. Really look at what the scripture says. Really look at what God is trying to tell us all and teach us all. It all comes down to this. Are we living his love or not? Regardless of what other people are doing. Are we living love 
or are we living the lies around us? I'm not willing to live the lies anymore. Anytime I find something that isn't of the truth, I want the truth to rid me of it. But that's me. The rest of you, all have your own choices as well. So, are you going to be part of the problem? Or part of the solution? Are you going to keep calling good evil and evil good? Or are you going to find out what good and evil really are? Good always wins out in the end. The battle's already been won. What are we going to do about it? I would like to say, with Joshua. Yea, Hoshua. As for me and my house, which my house is pretty small, we will serve the Lord. Yep. Um, to whatever extent God can help me to do so till the end of my breath, which is his anyway. Yeah, we're going to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And as for the rest of you guys, make your own choices. Stop letting others make them for you. Unless it's God, then that's still your choice. He gave us free will for a reason, peoples. Don't abuse the free will of others, and don't let others abuse your free will. They can't do anything about it. God gave it, and God can take it away, but guess what? He doesn't want to take away your free will. It's only people that want to hurt other people and beings that want to hurt other beings that take away the free will of others. Don't believe me? Search it out for yourself. Well, I guess I'm running out of steam, um, and that's pretty much the extent of my monologue for right now. I'm getting tired of hearing myself talk. So you guys, be blessed, the Lord be with you, the Lord keep you, his face smile upon you. His love guide your hearts, His truth, all that you are, let Him lead you. I love you guys and I'm praying for you guys even if I don't know you. Think about this, the Lord loves you even more and far more than I do, or ever would, or ever could, because He is love. He is truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by Him. And for a very good reason. You guys will find it when you want it. And you guys will find Him when you want Him. If you want Him. Well, 